Hello everyone. Uh, today's video, guys, is not about solving city of challenges, and it's not about you know, kind of. Video today is kind of code review, guys. So what we're going to do today is we're going to review a vulnerable code to SQL injection attack, and then we're going to see how to, how the patched code looks like after applying the protection mechanism, guys. So you know. Everyone knows, guys, that SQL injection attack consists of, um, you know, injection of a SQL query via the input data from the uh, client side to the server side. So whenever an attacker is successful in executing SQL injection, the exploit can read, I mean, the attacker can read sensitive information from the database. Uh, modify database information, including insertion, update, deletion of information or data, execute administration operations on the database, you know, such as he can or they can shut down the database system. Um, they can recover the contents of a given file available on the database. And in some scenarios, they can issue commands to the operating system, in which case we have SQL injection to shell. So it's very important, guys, to review your code. In this video, I'm talking about PHP. To review your code for SQL for the occurrences or the possibilities of a SQL injection instance incident, sorry, before uh, production. So you know, guys, the vulnerable code looks like that. So suppose that I have here over here, the uh, server is getting ID from the client side. In this case, it could be you know. So an example would be like, you know, HTTP, um, no, sorry. So let me write in some area here. Okay, so HTTP, you know, uh, let's say 192.168.94.1 um, slash index of PHP ID equal one. So guys, there are some websites or web server that, you know, interact with the clients and taking input from the client in this way. So you have the index of PHP page taking parameter ID. So if you change this, you get different input guys. So what happens behind is whenever a, va a value is passed to the ID parameter over here, in the uh, vulnerable code guys, the observer gets the code, as you can see, gets the ID from here and stores it in the ID variable. And then, as you can see, it sets up the connection to the database, it makes sure that the database is live to handle the queries from the client. And you know, here it's kind of, you know, database connection check. After that, when the ID is passed, as you can see uh, from here, the stored value or the parameter is, is passed to the uh, SQL query to be executed as it is, guys. This is the dangerous of it. So the ID parameter over here, or the uh, the uh, variable over here, you know, it got the uh, value of the parameter and then use it immediately in the SQL query, guy, without any input validation. So if you hear the word input validation, input sanitization, guys, this is what it looks like. The vulnerable version takes the ID from the client as it is and then passes it quickly, immediately, without any validation into a SQL query to be executed in the database. And all of you know, guys, that if someone like is, who wants to manipulate the database, go to the URL, guys. So instead of one, we can put or one equal one. So what's gonna happen over here? You know, as you can see, it's gonna say, it's gonna take that as it is, put it over here, and it's gonna result in a statement which is always true. And it would display the uh, content of the current table. In this case, the it's gonna display the user's table over here. Okay, so sometimes the user table contains the passwords, contains the password hashes, and it is, it is there where the attackers would dump your database and take all of those hashes to use it or crack it offline. So that's the vulnerable uh, version, guys. So let me remove that. 
So how can we patch this? Okay, let's go down. Now let's see how the patch version looks like. So as you can see here, we have the ID parameter from here. It is fetched from the URL. And that the parameter is stored in the variable over here. As you can see, the uh, variable contains the data from or the value from the browser, uh, sorry, from the client. And then here it goes the check process. This is called parameterized queries. So it gets the ID, it gets the, the parameter from the client, passes it into a checking process or checking point where uh, parameterized queries mechanism is employed to make sure that the input from the user or the input from the client is validated. You know, so as you can see here, guys, there is a statement where the ID uh, variable is subjected to check to make sure it is truly numeric. If it's not true, if it's really that the ID is one or two or three or four or whatever a numerical value is, then it checks for the database connection using the PDO uh, technique. If you if you happen to know what is a PDO, guys, so you know, when you want to uh, apply patches to a vulnerable code, there is a technique called PDO, guys. So the PDO, so you see, guys, it is, you know, PHP data objects, you know. Many developers, guys, access database using MySQL or MySQL extensions. So the parameterized queries check with the extension, guys, makes the checking process easier. So the example over here, guys, uses PDO, PHP data objects, with parameterized queries to prevent the SQL injection vulnerability. So the parameterized queries, as you can see here, uh, where the instance of the parameterized queries, here's the PTO process to so check the database connection is live. And as I can see, you see here, the parameterized queries made, okay? So first we have the check process to make sure that the uh, value or the parameter that's fetched from the client is numeric character, whatever the server requires. Then I passes that, you know, we have here the database connection checking process using the PDO. And over here, you see this query over here to tell the server to, I mean, you know, save the error files or the error queries or the errors, you know, in the log file instead of displaying them in the screen, which uh, could give the attacker information about, you know, the database, which is not good. So over here, you see, after I made sure that the ID is numeric. Now I passes, now I pass the ID to the SQL query guys. So, but instead of instead of using the value of the, the variable here, I used you know column and the ID. This is the idea, guys. This is how you validate the input from the client. So this is called you know binding parameters. And down, we prepare the SQL query. As you can see, um, the SQL query over here. Uh, where is this? Okay, so over here. So we prepare the SQL query, guys. And then we need to bind the parameters over here, these guys. Then to be able to execute the query that I want to execute first in the first place over here. So this query, guys, is getting executed, but in a parameterized mechanism, as you can see here. Now, after that, we fetch the results and we um, execute the SQL uh, connection, or sorry, the SQL command successfully and safely, guys. So, you know, this is, um, this review, guys, is only for developers. So, you know, it's not for the, the checking process, guys. You know, it takes place if you have, you know, uh, WordPress or plugins to prevent it against SQL injection. Um, these guys over there, they can detect these kind of 
instances of and, and warn you about the occurrence of SQL injection attack. Or if you use Acunetics or OWASP.10, it would reveal if uh, an application contains SQL injection vulnerability. But uh, we are doing here a code review, guys, because sometimes as a cybersecurity professional, you're required to know how a code works, um, inspects a code for possible bugs or vulnerabilities, and you know, fixes them or patch them. So this is one technique, actually. There are many techniques to uh, patch SQL injection vulnerability, uh, but this technique is applied in the PHP field, guys. There are techniques applied in Java or C Sharp, whatever. So I hope you found this video somewhat informative and see you in the next video, guys.